Welcome everyone to our final Coach Metrics Masterclass of the year. And we'll, we'll have more to come here in January that we're excited about. Um, our focus today is on marketing strategies to set up your 2022 business. Uh, so we're, we're actually not gonna talk much about Coach Metrics today, but we're gonna talk about marketing. And as we have um, these masterclasses, we've, we've really organized our masterclasses into three different topics. Um, one set of topics is around coach metrics, deep dive. So we get into the product, we get into features, we get into how, how can you best use coach metrics with your clients. Um, another set of topics has been around strategic coaching. So more around like how to, how to become a better coach and or what are some tools or assessments or thinking that you can apply to your coaching practice itself. And then the third set of sessions that we've been running are around business development. How can you um, build your coaching practice? So today fits into that business development category, if you will. And when we got together back in November, we talked about strategic planning, and that was also a business development process, uh, topic. In October, we talked about the future of work and how coaches can really be responding to some of the trends and patterns and things that are happening in the coaching industry that fit more into our strategic coaching topic. When we get together in January, February, and March, we're going to get back into the coach metric deep dive. We've got some exciting announcements that are going to happen in January. Uh, I'll plant the seed that coach metrics 2.0 is um will probably be re uh, released at the end of February, early March. So we're excited about uh, new look and feel and navigation, as well as some big features that we're going to be releasing this spring. So more to come on that, but I'll just plant the seed. But so with that in mind, we're going to be diving into the features of, of Coach Metrics during those, during those sessions. Um, here's our plan for today. We're going to talk about a concept called the customer value journey. We're gonna give you some time to actually think about your business and what that value journey looks like, the customer journey looks like for you. And then we'll share some strategies across the group so that we can learn from each other. Part of what we're trying to do with these master classes and with coach metrics uh, as a whole is to create a community of coaches. So people get to know each other. We have like this framework and this platform to coach leaders why not do that in different ways together, partner with each other, get to know each other and, and build our businesses and make a bigger impact on this world together. Three master classes coming up January 14th, 18th, and uh, Feb um, February 18th, March 18th. So mark your calendars for, for those. Uh, those will all be Coach Metrics deep dive topics. And for, for folks that I haven't met before, a uh, little history on how Coach Metrics started. It started because of a coaching business that we have and that we still run called 512 Solutions Consulting Group. And we had a need in our own business for a platform that would get action plans online because what we found is that when people were in our long-term programs and it was paper-based, the action plans that they were created, re creating really were not um, robust enough to drive behavioral change. And in many cases, people just weren't building action plans. Number two, we started to notice a trend where less and less people quite literally weren't showing up with pens because they expected a digital solution in their training and coaching um, offerings. And then measurement, of course, which is really where we pride ourselves and, and focus a lot of our efforts at Coach Metrics. Most coaches don't actually measure behavioral change and coaching is all about behavioral change. So what we want you to know is Coach Metrics is built by coaches, made for coaches and made with coaches. So we always welcome your feedback and input. Mm -hmm. You can't promise to build everything that you want, but we do promise to listen. And that's, um, so help us shape coach metrics. Um, uh, Robin and our support team just launched a survey, a, a coach satisfaction survey about the platform itself. If you got that, please, we, we really would love your feedback. There's also an opportunity to join our beta test team. So to, to really be part of influencing the future direction of coach metrics. So uh, if you're a subscriber, please, please give us some feedback so that we can, it can really help shape coach metrics 2.0. All right. So let's talk about uh, marketing and uh, building your coaching practice in 2022. And um, we're going to be using a tool called the customer 
value journey. Some of you may have seen this. You might even be using it in your practice. Um, it's a tool from an organization called Digital Marketer. We're not in any way affiliated with Digital Marketer. Marketer, we're not promoting them. We don't get any kind of kickbacks from them. We just really like this tool. It's a very simple way to think about the journey that your prospects and your customers go on. And I think in a way that's really actionable. And, um, uh, and so um, this, this slide is a slide that when I was co doing some coaching with Jane Warlow, she was my coach for several years. She showed it to me and it's, it's a slide that helps us think about like, what, what is the journey that your customer goes on? How do they show up when they first meet you? Frank, you mentioned you've got a new customer that you're excited about. Like what, what do they have? How do they feel? What does their average day look like? And then what's this journey that you're going to take them on so that there's a clear before and after transformation that happens as a result of your process. And so this customer journey map is a way to think about that experience that your customer goes through from the time that they become aware of who you are to the end result after the transformation with your coaching or your training or whatever service offerings you have. And um, Ryan Dice, who created this model, he often talks about um, the journey that we go through in personal relationships, meaning I met my wife, Rachel, um, 12 years ago, 13 years ago. We met at the St. Julian Hotel at a happy hour in Boulder, Colorado. And if I asked my wife to marry me on the first date, she probably would have, I don't know, it, we probably would have never talked again. But we often forget that as human beings, we have these relationships. Like first we get to know each other, then maybe we go on a date and then we start to date exclusively and then you get engaged and then eventually maybe you get married or whatever that looks like. But there's a process that people go through in relationships. And we often forget that in business. We meet someone and we want to get married to them and start doing work, but they don't, not, they don't know us. They don't like us. They don't trust us. And so we have to move our clients through a journey. And it's a journey that starts with uh, aware, engage, subscribe, convert, excite, ascend, advocate, and promote. And that's the process that we're going to talk about today. And so I'm going to spend um, maybe five minutes just talking through what each of these steps mean. I'll involve you in that discussion and then after that, we're gonna we're gonna pause and and talk about some strategies for each of our businesses. Um, if we have more people join, we'll we'll break out into some breakout groups. If it's um, if it's just the five or six of us now, we'll stay here in the main room. So that's where we're headed in this conversation today. So the first step of of this customer journey is is the aware stage and uh, the awareness stage. I really should say. And it's really about before people can buy your services, they have to know who you are, right? They have to know that you exist. And so the question for this stage is really about what are some strategies that you can use to build and to put in place to make sure that the market knows who you are and is aware of the services that you offer. So that's the step one of this journey. Step two of the journey is engagement. Now that the prospect is aware of you, this is really only the beginning of the relationship. And uh, they don't know you yet. They, they don't even know if they like you yet. And they probably don't, they don't trust you yet. So we're not ready to ask our clients to start working with us. Just like in my relationship with Rachel, she didn't know me, like me, or trust me. She's not going to marry me after the first date. So this is the stage where the conversation really starts to occur. And part of what we have to do at this stage is think about some form of content or engagement with a client that either entertains them, gives them some information, or engages them in some meaningful way that they start to build that relationship with you. So that's the second step of the customer value journey. 
The third step of the value journey is what uh, the digital marketer organization calls the subscribe stage. And at this point in the journey, your prospect knows who you are. They've engaged with you either like through a newsletter or maybe a blog post or maybe some way on social media. But if you don't get this person's information, odds are you're probably not going to hear from them, right? There's a lot of noise in the marketplace. There's a lot of newsletters and emails and people are always pinging us all the time. But if we don't, if we're not able to get the person's contact, it's going to be hard to really hone in on our target. And it's, it's going to be hard to exchange value with people. So somehow we have to get people to subscribe in some way to who we are. The fourth step is a conversion step or to convert your client. And so the key to this step is to make what digital marketer, digital marketer calls entry point offers. And they, they are offers that you make to a prospect that gives them value without them having to put too much skin in the game, right? So it's a, it's an offer where there is an exchange of some either value for money or for a product or service, but it's like an entry level value. It's like an entry level offer. You're not, you're not asking too much too soon, if you will. And um, what they often say and repeat at Digital Marketer about this stage of the journey is that um, it's often not a profitable stage for your business. So think about Coach Metrics as an example. Some of you are subscribers, some of you are new to Coach Metrics. At Coach Metrics, you may get a free trial. You might experience a demo with Robin uh, or one of our team members. And um, there's, there's no profit for us at that stage. And in fact, it's, it's a loss leader, right? We're investing time to build a relationship with a potential new subscriber. And if that subscriber signs up, that's great. But there's, there's a loss that we incur until several months into a, a paying relationship with a subscriber. But there's some value that's being exchanged. And it's often low risk for the person that's making that commitment. But it's a commitment that is now building trust and conversion with that potential prospect. All right, next stage of the value journey is what they call the excite stage. And really at this point, the customer has had a transaction with you, even if it's small. Um, and part of the excite, the excite stage here is that they are starting to really experience who you are, your service, the value that you're offering. And the opportunity here is to excite them by giving them even more value. So maybe you offered them a free coaching insight session. And there's something that you do after that insight session to get them even more excited about who you are and the service that you're providing. Or maybe there was like a, a low level, a low level sort of low risk webinar that they paid to join you or a masterclass. But there's something that you're doing after that masterclass to add some unexpected value. The idea here is that you're exciting them about your service as you're building trust with them. All right, a couple more stages here, and then we'll start talking together on what to do. The ascend stage, if you will, this is really your core offering. So they've gotten to know you, you've built awareness, you've engaged them, they somehow have subscribed to your service, you've engaged them in a, in a small offering. Now you're, you're make, making the pitch for whatever your core offering is. Maybe it's a leadership development program that's 12 months long, or maybe it's your executive coaching program. But what you're doing is you're making the, an offer for that core service. And as you sort of ascend through providing that service with your client, you're also doing some additional cross-selling or upselling or helping your clients understand how your services can be used more broadly in their organization. Your customers are now 
engaged with you, they're engaging in your core product. And we move to these last two stages, which is really about getting your customers to be both an advocate for you and a promoter. So the advocate stage of the journey and the promoter stage are two distinct stages. When your customer is an advocate, typically that person is someone who speaks positively about your brand, but they're a passive promoter, meaning they don't typically necessarily promote your business in an active way. But if you ask them for a referral or a reference, they respond favorably. So asking for a LinkedIn testimonial or something you could put on your website or directing a new prospect to them would be an example of someone who is an advocate for your business. Ultimately, we want to get our customers, our clients to be promoters, which is that last piece of the of this customer value journey. And promoters are much more active in that they, without your prompting, they spread the value, they spread the word of your brand, your products, your services, and they're truly advocates for who you are and they start promoting you without you even having to ask. They essentially become kind of a unpaid sales force, if you will. So for example, you might have a client and they're super happy with the services that you provide and maybe they're engaged with other professionals in other organizations who have similar needs and they actively talk about the value that they received from your service um, without you having to prompt them or ask them. We want our clients to be ultimately promoters of, of who we are um, as coaches, trainers, facilitators, consultants, whatever our services look like. All right, so that is the customer value map or the journey. And the opportunity now is for us to think about in our businesses, what would we need to do for each of these stages to, um, to move our clients logically and consistently through this journey. So I'm going to open it up instead of breaking out into uh, breakout groups. Uh, let's open it up for some ideas. And as we go through the process, think about a specific type of client. So many of you may have different personas of clients that you have. You might have executives that you sell to. You might sell to human resources leaders. That's a different persona than selling to um, a typical p l owner of a, of a part of a business. Maybe you sell to you know, a different persona. So keeping in mind um, a very specific persona, because you could have different value uh, journeys for those different personas. What are some ways that you might think about building awareness with, uh, with that particular persona? So let's... Uh, Let's open it up for some conversation. That first step in the process was around awareness. What are some ways you might make, build some awareness in the marketplace of who you are and what you do? Robert. Yes. <laughs> um, so <clears throat> I can only speak for um, one of the programs within the People Tech Executive Coaching. So I think yeah. you guys know that uh, that Mike has charged me with building the self-paced uh, leadership program that we have. Nice. And um, you know, so there there's a lot of other programs or different stages of this uh, customer value path, which I love, by the way. It's very very helpful to think through that and to think how you're going to engage the customer. And I would say, you know, from the um, from the self-paced perspective, I think we're somewhere between exciting and ascending i'd like to think mm -hmm. you know, we're kind of going through there and one of the things that we did to sort of promote that awareness was to start by uh piloting the program and just you know getting it out there reaching out to contacts and mm -hmm. you know showing them the program allowing them to um you know to take the program for free basically you know that lost leader uh you know concept that you talked about earlier and so far i mean i think that's worked pretty well We've gotten a pretty broad base of people piloting the program, which I think is increasing that awareness for us. Nice. Awesome. So in some ways, like that idea of giving something away for free, you could use that up front in the, um, in the awareness stage. It could also probably fit in 
that convert stage, which is further down. So after people already know who you are, your, your people tech is the company that you're working with. Um, that could also fit that pre giving away the program in that fourth step of convert. Yeah. Great. Yeah. We're kind of melding the awareness and engagement and excitement, you know, sort of all together with the piloting program. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think the challenge here is I, I can see how some of these things blend. I think the challenge for all of us is to really think about um, how do we, um, how do we think about these as separate stages and what would we, or might we do differently at, at different, at different stages? How about others? What would you do or what are you currently doing or maybe thinking about something new for 2022 to build awareness, that first step of your practice, your brand, who you are? What have you been doing in your business, Doug, or what comes to mind for you? Um, I'm close to, I would say I'm quasi retired. So I'm doing, I'm, I'm thinking differently. I've started a podcast and I wrote a book. Nice. Yeah. So Excellent. 2022, I'm, I'm the way I'm going to, I'm trying to just get the word out about the podcast. So I'm going to set it, put together an email opt-in list and uh, just, you know, start taking the first thousand contacts I have and try to build a contact list and let them know that it's out there. It's a free product. So I'm not really trying to build my coaching practice per se and consulting. <clears throat> I've got enough work right now, but I'm trying to build a different brand of thought leadership. Very nice. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, so the podcast, certainly a great way to build awareness. Um, and um, and engagement, it probably fits into that second piece as well. Um, and book certainly is, you know, it's, it's latent marketing material. Um, I've got a book coming out in January myself as well. And, um, we've had Congrats. a lot of, thank you. Yeah. It's, it's my fourth book and that's been a huge, um, a huge way for us to build a business over the last, um, probably 10 to 12 years of the, the business's 20 year life. So, these are all great ways to build awareness, grow your brand, grow your thought leadership, build credibility. And then that leads us to the second phase, right? Once we start to get people to become aware of, of who we are and what we do, then we can start to engage with them to start to build that trust. What are some ways that you might engage with, with people in, in your business? You know, it's, it's interesting, Doug, you mentioned the podcast, like that actually could be, that could fit in into this category first. Like there might be a first step to build awareness that you actually have a podcast to get them to download the podcast, engage, engage with you uh, in that way. So mm -hmm. the podcast might even fit more into this second phase versus the, the first phase. Um, maybe, maybe let me go back to the, the awareness phase, uh, other things that we've seen coaches doing, some of which we're doing as well, having a good bio, right? People need to know who you are, what your company offers, uh, blog posts that feed into social media, uh, reaching out to your existing networks, right? It's letting your networks know who you are, what you do, uh, drip campaigns, case studies, um, People might volunteer or be on different boards. Uh, you might speak at conferences or local SHRM events, uh, lunch and learns, maybe not so dissimilar to what Robert said about giving free things away. Um, value added content through other partners, uh, maybe discounted or pro bono work. Um, so we're giving the market an opportunity to get to know who we are. All right, so now we're in the engagement. People start to know who we are. How do we engage people? What are, what are some ways in which you're doing that? Greg, how about you? Uh, one way you can do, it seems like one way um, that I'm trying to do that is to have on my website content, uh, either from other people or a teeny weeny bit that I've created and then mm -hmm. place that on LinkedIn so that when people nice. want the content, they go to my website. And then if they want to, 
you know, they, they can serve if they want to. Right. Yeah. Awesome. So you're leveraging both your website and LinkedIn. How are you connecting those platforms together? Is the entryway your website or is it LinkedIn? And then that's taking them to your website or it's LinkedIn. What does that look like? Okay. Uh, link and, and I'm working with a marketing group that, you know, nice. I work with a manager and they do all the technical stuff because I'm a right. coach. I'm not a marketer. So smart. So you're finding ways to leverage, right? What you yeah. do well. Yeah. Um, and, and so how you, and it's interesting because I think as coaches, trainers, facilitators, whatever our model looks like consultants, we have a lot of content. I think the opportunity for us to think about is how do we repurpose content, yeah. right? So maybe you take a blog post or let, let's take Doug's example. Doug, let's say you record that first um, podcast episode. There are transcription services that can take that podcast and just get you a verbatim transcript. You can take that transcript and turn it into a blog post. Same exact content, but you're just repurposing it and adding and creating like a really um, integrated marketing effort. And you can take that same transcript and put some of, the, of that transcript onto the episode page in your blog. So Greg, I hear what I hear you saying is you're mar- you've got a marketing firm that's helping you do some of this. So they're leveraging LinkedIn and your website at the same time. Yeah, right. yeah. yeah, awesome. Any other ways to engage your audience? So we've got podcasts, social media, uh, your website, how else are you engaging your audience? Another piece that I'm doing is offering something free on my website that I'm driving people there and they, they, can, get an, they can get a piece of that for free in exchange for uh, their email address. Excellent. And that really brings us to the third piece, which is subscribe, right? So before we can get people to subscribe, they have to know who we are, that awareness. They have to engage with us and say, okay, you know, I trust Greg. Uh, enough to give him my email address. And in in return, I'm going to give that person some piece of value. Could be a white paper, could be a toolkit, could be an infographic. It could be um, some kind of showcase that you might be doing. Um, But what, you know, what can you do in exchange for some value to get people to subscribe and start to follow you, right? As they start to follow you, um, building trust and uh, credibility in who you are. I think Marshall Goldsmith does a really wonderful job of this. Uh, he's a good coach, always has been a good coach, but you know what? We're all good coaches too. Marshall is a great marketer and he has videos and newsletters and a very strong LinkedIn presence. He's authored, you know, dozens of books, 40 plus books. He's a fantastic marketer. And what he tends to do is attract a really strong following. But that following only happens when we subscribe to his newsletter or his LinkedIn articles, things like that. So this step is is really key. Brings us to the next stage, which is some kind of conversion stage. How do you convert from someone who's on your newsletter, who's on your list, they're in your tribe to someone who has some small experience of you? Like, What would that look like in your business? What are some ideas that you might have to give people some kind of um, value? Um, and they're actually some kind of entry point offer where there's an exchange of money of some sort. What is that? What does that look like? Well, I don't want to dominate the conversation, but I'm all over this kind of stuff. I'm, I'm very, very aware of this journey and I want to get better and better at it. Is this how it yeah. works? It's how it works. Um, yeah. Uh, the other piece is to have at the, what I'm noticing at the subscribe stage, Mm-hmm. If I can get someone to talk to me, if I can get a phone call, right, that changes the game. That really changes yeah. the game. And then in the phone call, if I can really help them, you know, of of beginning to open up their coaching or team coaching, they begin to open up their situation and the outcome they want to get to. And if I can really be, 
automatically be giving them value, giving away, give it away, give it away, give it away, listen, you know, really listen, coach them a bit, um, refer them to a resource that is right in the crosshairs of their need. Yeah. Um, and they may not respond right away, but my hope is I'm, when they think of me and my company, they think, well, that guy really helped me. And that's a win. Yeah. Yeah, that's for win. sure. At, at this point, this is a win. I can't call, you know, I may not be able to close on them, but it's a win. Yeah. And, and then if I, if I have their information, then I can even follow it up with um, something free. So maybe something I see, I send them an article and, right. hey, I'm watching out for you. Boom. Click. Right. Yeah. yeah. And uh, those are all really good points. And we're not trying to close them here, right? You're somewhere around subscribe and convert. We're not really trying to close them on a big engagement, that core engagement until we get to the ascend part. So you're, you're, get, you're getting them on the phone. They're experiencing you to some extent. Yes. You're adding some additional value, which is really sort of that excite piece beyond what they expected to get. And um, they're, they're getting like an experience of you. So for us at Coach Metrics, that experience might be a demo <clears throat> that we run. Uh, it might be that free trial that we do. Um, on our consulting side of the business, the, the conversion might be, maybe we go in and we do a workshop and they're just paying us for one workshop. But what happens is they get to experience us doing that five or six or $8,000 workshop. And after that workshop, we'll have a client impact session. We always do client impact sessions after our work because what it does is it gives us an opportunity to follow up with clients, gather their feedback, offer some observations and recommendations, and then talk about other possibilities. But that workshop is an entryway into a six month or nine month program, our high end offering. So the conversion piece, it could be a free trial of some sort. It could be that free coaching session that you offer. It could be that insight session that you offer. It could also be a workshop that you offer that people are paying for, but it leads them to something bigger that comes down the road, road later on. Um, what are some ways that you're adding value and providing some excitement? So we, we heard a couple of examples <clears throat> from Greg. He's finding resources that meet them at the crosshair of what's important to them. Uh, what, what are some other ways that you can uh, get people excited about what, uh, what you're doing and how to add value for them? Frank, anything in your business that you can think of that, that you're doing in that sort of excite phase? Um, hmm, good question. I'm, uh, I'm just thinking about this new client um, that I'm, I'll be working with. Um, and I think that it was, we were actually pitching a project together um, potentially pitching a project together. And he saw how I worked and he's the CEO of this consulting firm. And then he said, hey, you know, I think maybe you can help me with my sales organization and how we're selling and that sort of thing. And so the, the conversation was prompted by him mm -hmm. based on our initial interest in, and we were introduced by a CEO of one of his client companies and, um, so that's that's how that came about. So a little bit of a circuitous way, but I guess the excitement was he saw just how I was operating and guiding and recommending in just a simple conversation um, yeah. tied to potential project that we would pitch together with this this um, other mm -hmm. customer. Yeah. So so I don't know that 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 seemed to. It seemed to trigger something in his mind. I, you know, wasn't selling anything. I was just working with him on this other thing. So, yeah, you know, it's interesting that it reminds me. I don't know if uh, if any of you are familiar with Patrick Rinchioni's book, Getting Naked, and it's mm -hmm. about it's about his consulting practice, 
And and part of what he talks about is when you're when you're in the um, like the sales stage of consulting or uh, of of selling an engagement with a client, just start consulting with them as if they're already a client. So when you're in that meeting where maybe you're reviewing a proposal or in the early stages of a discussion, you know, get up on the whiteboard and just start operating as if this organization was already a client. And I, I think that fits really nicely into the excite phase. So some things that people might do in the excite phase might be doing things like, you know, adding an extra consultation or maybe sending something after a meeting. Like after we meet with initial prospect, we always send them a cop, a couple copies of my different books. We, we point them to a toolkit that they can download a PDF. And then we usually also point them to our future of leadership blog and podcast page. So they're getting all this value after one initial conversation. But it also doesn't have to be physical, tangible stuff. It could be the way in which you're having a conversation. And I think this might be what you're speaking to, Frank, or the value that you're adding in that conversation. So we want them to experience us. That's the convert piece. And then we want to show some additional value that they didn't expect that will get them excited about our service. Now we're ready to ask them to marry us, right? They know us. They like us. They trust us. Now we're ready to pitch whatever it is, that primary service, and over time to make some additional offerings that might go with that service. Um, one thing that I would add, if you're a Coach Metrics subscriber, part of what we have learned from our subscribers is that they are winning work because of the way that they pitch Coach Metrics in that sales process. They're telling their clients that they measure results that they measure behavioral change, that they'll know that their engagements are successful because we've got the metrics to prove it. So bring coach metrics into that conversation as well, because not many coaches actually measure behavioral change, but you have the opportunity to do that. But you're ready at this phase of the engagement to start that pitch and to offer that, that core service that you, that you have. And continue to have those follow-up discussions with your client throughout off that core service offering so that you can look for other opportunities to work with your clients and to pitch other services or upsell or cross-sell things that you might, might be offering. The last two phases of the journey are the advocate phase and the promote phase. For me, these are always, these are the two hardest phases. I don't like to ask for referrals or references, but it's really important. So where would we, what would we do in this advocate phase? What, what would this look like in a coaching or consulting practice? Could I ask you to uh, write up a short uh, testimony about your experience, good or bad, yeah. And um, send it to me or send it, you know, post it somewhere or whatever. Love it. Yeah. I like to ask, exactly. I like, I, I like to ask clients what I can do for them. Say more about that, Doug. Yeah. Is there anything I could do for you and your business and what you're doing to help you differently than what we're doing in our engagement? So I think mm -hmm. to build, before you make the ask, make sure you're willing to help them as well. Yeah. Great. Awesome. We've been doing this in Coach Metrics. We call them Coach Spotlights. You may have seen newsletters come out. So, um, Frank, I think we spot you were one of our first spotlights. And, and the way that we did it, um, Frank, you may remember, we asked like three simple questions. So we give we give the the person that we're asking the referral or the or the reference from um, a framework. And I think our questions were something like, you know, what did you do before Coach Metrics? What, you know, what has coach metrics enabled for your business and what's been the results? I forget the exact questions, but three simple questions to give people a framework in which they can um, write a testimonial or write about how your product or service is, is helping your business. And just a point on that, um, it's, it's great for the coach too. Like it was great for me to take what you guys gave me and put it on my LinkedIn page. 
you know so, exactly so yeah. i'm i'm you know scratching your back but you're scratching mine too so it's yeah that, nice. that's a good that's a good point frank and so tell tell me more about what you're doing with that because what we did is we took Frank's information and we put it on our blog. So it's, it, it helps the coach metrics business, but to Frank's point, we also created this really nice PDF mm -hmm. that Frank could take and, and use in his own marketing. So yep. Yep. it's a good point. Like we're helping you, you're helping us. And that's, that's the partnership that we're trying to create. Um, and Doug, I think in some ways you're also saying the same thing, like, how can I help you? How can you help me? So no. what, I'm going to, I'm going to invite you to be on my podcast. I'm dropping my 50th one next month. So I'll just have you come on and we can talk about coach metrics. Awesome. That's see, I mean, perfect. That's Advocate. great. Love. Yeah. And, and so that serves your clients in a way because hopefully I can give them some value, but it also helps serve the coach metrics business too. So it's, it's, and, and I think that's what happens when we start getting to that advocate and promote stage. So Folks, we're right at our time. I'll, I'll hang on for a few more minutes if, if anyone wants to continue the discussion. Again, we found this tool to just be a simple way and a practical, pragmatic way to think about marketing, especially in a small business. Think about these steps separately. Think about the journey from front to, to end with your customer and what can you do at each stage to move that customer along and, and get to know you, like you, and trust you so that you can do more of that great, meaningful work that you're doing in this world. Any other questions or thoughts, feel free to sign off. Thank you so much for joining us. I hope you join us in February, uh, January, February, March. We'll be doing deep dive uh, discussions into coach metrics features. And especially as we get into the February session, February will probably give you a sneak peek into what the new coach metrics will look like. And in March, we'll have a few new features to, to show you that we'll, we'll be diving into.